Hi and welcome to Hands-On Education. This video is about Mary Anning, a female fossil hunter in the 19th century. Mary Anning was born on the 27th of May 1799 in Lyme Regis on the south coast of England. It is said that when Mary was a baby she was under a tree which was struck by lightning. The three women she was with died, but Mary survived. Women at this time were not considered intelligent. The story of surviving a bolt of lightning would later be used as a way to explain Mary's intellect. Mary's family was poor and she would search the beach with her father and brother Joseph, looking for fossils which they could sell to tourists. In 1810, when Mary was only 11 years old, her father died. She had to leave school to spend more time searching and selling fossils to make an income for her family. Like many girls at this time, Mary did not have a formal education. She could read and write though, and she taught herself about anatomy and geology. In 1811, when Mary was 12 years old, she and her brother Joseph found the skull of an ichthyosaur. It took Mary many months to carefully dig the skull out of the rocks, and when she finally exposed the skull, some scientists believed it was a type of crocodile. The skull was a topic of debate for many years. The idea of extinction had only recently been suggested by scientist George Cuvier, and many believed that the skull belonged to an animal which was still alive. In 1823, Mary found a plesiosaur skeleton. The skeleton was so strange, many believed it was fake. A number of male scientists, including George Cuvier, met in London to debate this new skeleton. As a woman, Mary was not invited to this meeting. Once the skeleton was proved to be real, Mary gained a reputation as a serious fossil hunter. Many scientists would visit Mary, buying the prepared fossils and discussing her theories and ideas. Despite using her fossils, Mary's contributions were not acknowledged in scientific papers or research. In 1824, Lady Harriet Sylvester wrote this in her diary about meeting Mary Anning. She made herself so thoroughly acquainted with the science that the moment she finds any bones, she knows to what tribe they belong. They acknowledge that she understands more of the science than any other in this kingdom. This diary entry is an important resource, reflecting how respected Mary was by other scientists and showing the high level of knowledge she had about fossils. In 1828, Mary discovered parts of a pterodactyl. This was the first to be found in Britain. In 1829, paleontologist William Buckland referred to Mary and her discoveries in a paper he wrote. In doing so, Buckland recognised Mary's value as a fossil hunter. In 1830, Mary found another plesiosaur skeleton this time more complete than the last. In 1847, aged 47, Mary Anning died from breast cancer. Although not formally recognised for her work with fossils, she was well respected in a field which was dominated by men at this time. In 2010, 163 years after her death, the Royal Society recognised Mary Anning as one of the most influential British women in the history of science. A timeline can show us when events happened in history. In this timeline, we can see when Mary Anning discovered these large and significant fossils in a relatively short period of time. 
For your hands-on activity, use images to create a timeline showing Mary Anning's important discoveries. For more information about this activity and more activities related to fossils, please go to handsoneducation.com fossils. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we will see you soon. Bye!